This is our annual luncheon, and I hope you find it informative, engaging, and yes, inspiring. Let me begin by thanking some of the people whose extraordinary generosity puts us on the edge of making this the most successful BGA luncheon ever. The title sponsor is the Bandon Dunes Golf Resort, developed by our friend Michael Kaiser. You can see a wonderful picture of Bandon Dunes on the back of today's program. Platinum sponsors include Michael and Jackie Farrow and the Sun-Times Foundation, the Chicago Community Trust, David Harrow, Michael Sachs Business, Grover, Grosvenor Capital Management, Dick Uline's family-owned business, and our friendly landlords at 223 West Jackson, Mark Realty. Also, our pro bono law firm, Kirkland & Ellis, which sponsored the pre-lunch reception, a thanks to David Muir and our friends at ABC7 and ABC News. And finally, our thanks to you, everyone in this room who sponsored a table, bought a ticket, or just showed up because you understand how important the fight for good government is. We couldn't, go, we couldn't do this without you, so thank you one and all. At, <laughs> next time we'll put an applause thing on the screen so uh, you get the cue. Um, as I've told most of you so many times, uh, the Better Government Associ Association is a full-service watchdog organization. We shine a light on government and hold public officials accountable because better government is our right in exchange for our hard-earned tax dollars. It's simple as that. But sadly, we're not getting very much good government. We're seeing crises and crises everywhere we turn. Look at the city of Chicago, its Board of Education, the state of Illinois, and smaller units of government all over the state, facing daunting fiscal, ethical, and pension challenges. Why is that? The simple answer is failed leadership. Bad choices and poor decisions by elected and public officials who are much more concerned with self-interest than the public interest. And so they have maintained their power bases by, by gerrymandering district boundaries, rigging the election machinery, and essentially setting up government to keep themselves in and us out. That's part of the problem, but ladies and gentlemen, there is a second half to the problem, and that's us. I don't mean you individually in this room, I mean citizens collectively. Not enough of us are registering to vote, or voting even if we are registered, or running for office, or supporting candidates, or showing up at government meetings, or even paying attention. We have checked out. I refer to this as a crisis of civic disengagement, and it forms the theme of today's luncheon. Better government is, in fact, up to us. We can only restore our democracy through civic engagement. The BGA will do its part as watchdogs, and our friends here and all over the state will do their jobs. And so in the spirit of civic engagement, we asked some of our friends in the BGA family and two of Chicago's most prominent civic business and philanthropic leaders to spread the message of civic engagement with a video. The video takes the form of an open letter, and it's addressed to all of us. So I know what we're going to do with the time we have during this luncheon. We're going to talk about the BGA now and in the future, and we're going to talk about ways that you can continue to be supportive. But I know what I'm going to do with the time I have after this luncheon. I'm going to go back to the watchdog work I do with a stellar staff 24-7, and we're eventually going to make a difference. I want to thank ABC7, ABC News, and the Mikva Challenge for some of the video, and Fig Media for creating the video. I think it does a good job of framing the problem and talking about what lies ahead. Most of you in this room do participate, but that's a message to a lot of others, and we'll try to carry it as widely and as uh, broadly as possible. At the BGA, what we're going to do to fight for this better government is we're going to work with the five pillars of what the BGA stands for. We investigate, litigate, educate, advocate, and we, we communicate. Since I came to the BGA six years ago, we've released 456 investigations of governments in, and, and the public officials in the city, the suburbs, and Springfield. If you've been following the news recently, you know how important it is to have somebody paying attention to public education. 
The recent indictment and guilty plea by former Chicago School CEO Barbara Bird Bennett on federal corruption charges, rigging a no-bid contract so that she could line her pockets with more than $2 million. Disgraceful, reprehensible, sad, but true. That story might never have come to light if it weren't for the work of the BGA's senior education reporter, Sarah Karp. Sarah began reporting on that contract two years ago when she was working for Catalyst Chicago, an education publication. We thought you might like to hear some of Sarah's thoughts about that investigation, so we posed five questions. Take a look. Let me also add, by way of editorial edition, And thanks, Sarah. We're really glad to have you on our team more now, and it's, I think we can look forward to a lot more education stories like this because that's one of our most pressing problems. Let me just say, uh, in closing on that case, that we also need a much, much tighter and more restrictive policy toward no-bid contracts so that they're only used in real emergencies and not to foment corruption. Let me say that the second, Sarah might not have had access to much of this information, and she might not have done a lot of this stellar reporting, if it hadn't been for FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, that's the law that is supposed to guarantee us access to public records, but all too often it doesn't because government stonewalls. And that's why the second pillar of the BGA agenda is litigation. We aggressively defend the public's right to know through legal action. We filed 44 lawsuits in recent years, 14 in the past year alone against government agencies that don't turn over documents we're entitled to. We eventually get those documents after a lot of time is wasted and a lot of tax dollars are spent, but we're going to stay at it, and sooner or later, government is going to have to realize that public information belongs to the public. We also advocate and inform people as part of our commitment to civic engagement. We have touched an estimated 12,000 people face-to-face -face in recent years at our watchdog training sessions, our FOIA clinics, our IDEA forums, and our newest initiative, Candid Conversations. We've had candid conversations in the past year with then-Governor-elect Bruce Rauner, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, Mayoral Challenger Chewy Garcia, sitting down and holding them accountable. Our next one is next month with Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle, and hopefully some of you will be able to see those. Let me take a break here while I'm talking about civic engagement to point out something that happened in recent months that we should all applaud. There is a new law in Illinois that is mandating civics education in our high school. That law would never have come about without the tireless effort by three of our BGA friends and supporters there in this room today. So a big shout out to the McCormick Foundation, the Boeing Corporation, and the Chicago Community Trust. Congratulations on a major contribution <laughs> Congratulations on a major contribution to the next generation of engaged citizens and voters. That is critical. The fourth pillar of the BGA mission is to advocate. That means supporting and fighting for good laws and fighting to get rid of bad laws. Um, for instance, three examples of our advocacy work. We're on the forefront in the fight to modernize, expand, and protect the Freedom of Information Act. Smart streamlining is a top priority. That means working to reduce unnecessary units of government. And we're advocating for an open and above board pri privatization process so Chicago never sees another parking meter abomination. And finally, the fifth pillar is that we communicate. We communicate our good government message on television and radio and newspaper columns, blogs, and through socio social media with dozens of media partners around the state. All of this work, investigating, litigating, educating, advocating, and communicating, all of that has an impact. The BGA's watchdog work has resulted in more than 118 specific reforms in recent years. Wayward employees disciplined or fired, bad policies changed, and tax dollars saved. We estimate that our work has saved approximately 50 million tax dollars it's a drop in the bucket in a big state like Illinois, but I say it's a good start and we're going to stay at it. You have to excuse me, I don't have my bifocals today, so it's on and off with the glasses. 
So where are we going down the road? What, am I going to be t what are we going to be working on in the next year so that I'll have new things to report to you when we, when we gather again next October? Our emphasis will be on strengthening access to public records, ending conflicts of interest, reforming our redistricting and election systems, making our justice system more just, protecting taxpayers from unwise privatization plans, and eliminating wasteful and duplicative units of government by smart streamlining, and that's just a few of our ideas. That's an ambitious agenda, but we're going to carry it, carry it out because, as I say, we are entitled to better government. We give our tax dollars involuntarily to government, and we have every right to demand that they start spending them more honestly, fairly, accountably, transparently, and efficiently.